I don't wanna be just someone that's new I speak my mind so free so you could hear the truth Yeah, I know that we all have fear Hey guys, I am Micah Murphy and this is the Truth For You podcast. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. Well, today is a big episode. Today is number seven. And what do we know about number seven? Well, in the Bible, number seven is like that perfect number. It's the number for completion. So that means today is the perfect podcast. No, not really. Uh, It's going to be far from perfect. This podcast is far from perfect. This episode will be far from perfect. And it's not going to be complete either. Hopefully this podcast is a lot more than just seven episodes. But seven is an important number and so i want the podcast to be kind of a special episode since you know we're representing number seven today so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna talk about another reason why this podcast is called the truth for youth now if you watch the very first episode which if you haven't go back and watch if we're on youtube or or listen on the podcast go back and listen to why it's called the truth for youth. Uh, I go back and I talk a little bit about the truth being so relative in today's terms. It's hard to know what is truth because so many people are out there saying, oh, but this is true. And then in reality, it's not really truth or people are just lying or people have hidden agendas. And so it's hard to know what is truth. And, you know, we're, we're obviously still in the middle of this quarantine and it's hard to know what is true about this virus. We're hearing all sorts of statistics and, you know, this is how many people have died, but yet there's other, you know, underlying causes. And so it's hard to know what is true, right? But the other reason that I wanted to call this the truth for youth is because of what Paul tells the Philippians. In chapter four of Philippians, verses eight and nine, this is what Paul says. I'm going to read you three different versions because, man, I just like different versions of the Bible. I like the way people uh, express the passages different or interpret them a little different. It just kind of rings true a little different here and there. And so anyways, I'm going to read you three different versions because I like these three. Other ones are great too, but, but these are the three that I like. Okay, so the first one is the Good News Translation, and this is what it says. In conclusion, my friends, again, Paul's kind of wrapping up some stuff that he's been telling the the Philippians, the Christians there in uh, Philippi. In conclusion, my friends, fill your minds with those things that are good and that deserve praise, things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. Put into practice what you learned and received from me, both from my words and from my actions. And the God who gives us peace will be with you. All right, here's another version. The Living Bible. And now, brothers, as I close this letter, let me say this one more thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and good and right. And think about those things that are pure and lovely and dwell on the fine good things in others. Think about all you can praise God for and be glad about it. Keep putting into practice all you've learned from me and saw me doing and the God of peace will be with you. All right, and then the message, this is what it says. Summing up, friends, I'd say, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things that are true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, Things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me and what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Wow, huh? Pretty good. So again, we are instructed 
to focus on, to fill our minds, to fix our thoughts on things that are true, the truth. So there's another great reason uh, to name this podcast The Truth for Youth, uh, because this is truth, you know, the biblical truth. And what is Paul talking about here? He's not just talking about things that are true in nature or things that are true in society or what humans say are true. He's talking about biblical truth. Like that is his standard. When you're measuring something, obviously there has to be some kind of standard, whatever that is. You know, if you're measuring, you know, greatness or good or whatever, what is the measure that you're measuring against? And that standard is the Bible, is biblical truth, is God. So if God is true, the Bible truth, then that's what the measure is. Anything that's contrary to that is not truth. So Paul's saying those are the things that we need to focus on. Those are the things that we are to fix our minds on. And it's interesting what Paul's saying. He's not just saying, you know, hey, just just randomly think about it or just it's a simple thought. When he's using that word, he is meaning to really think about it, right? Like to really dwell and really meditate on on things that are true, not just, a, not just a thought that comes and goes out of our mind, but to really meditate on it, right? Like, like think about it over and over and just fix your mind on it so that it becomes like ingrained in your, in your brain. And then he goes on, let's look at the passage. Uh, after he says that you were to think about those things, he then goes on to say, put that into practice. It says, keep putting into practice all that you've learned. Like we all know, right? Like we've all been in a class where we had the teacher and they're teaching us stuff, right? And it goes in our, our brain and maybe you even learn it just a little bit for the test. Maybe you memorize it just so that you can ace that test or, you know, get by whatever you have to do. But then it's gone. You're not really thinking about it. You're certainly not putting it into practice. But what about things that you know are truly beneficial in your life? You know, things that you're taking and you're really applying. You know, for all my athletes out there, when a coach is teaching you something, a skill or a technique or, or something that's super important either for a game, maybe it's the game plan for, you know, that Friday night football game or for baseball or volleyball or whatever, right? It, whatever that game plan is and you're truly thinking about it and you're truly like learning it you want to put that into practice right like if you're going to beat that opponent or whatever then then you need to put that game plan into practice that your coaches have studied and come up with well that's kind of what Paul is saying here like don't just think about these things put it into practice like use these things that's how you benefit you know it does you no good just to think about it and then you don't act on it because what Paul is trying to show you and tell you is the things that he's been sharing with with these Christians in Philippi like this is the stuff that's important to life this is how you grow in Christ this is how you live a meaningful life you think about these things but then you have to put them into practice now I'm going to kind of Change gears a little bit. All right, when we're thinking about something, what, what are we really doing? Well, we're, we're feeding our mind, right? Like we're, we're putting something into our brain and we're thinking about it. And, and if you're thinking about something, it's probably influencing maybe the thoughts that you're having or even who you are and how you act and how you respond which can be a good thing if you're feeding it good food, good sources. Now, let's think about a car, for, for example. If you have a car that has a gasoline engine, the only way that car is going to run is if you fuel it with gasoline, right? You put gas in the fuel tank. If you were to put a bunch of water in that gas tank or soda or some other random liquid in there, it's not going to run, is it? It's probably going to tear up the engine. 
But if you were to put gasoline, then it's going to run. Now, think about if you have a, a high-end sports car, performance car, even a race car. You're probably not going to put the lowest octane of gas in it. You know, even putting gas in it, but putting better quality gas, right? Like you're going to find the highest octane that you can, race fuel even, right? Because it's better quality, which means your engine's going to run more efficiently and you're probably going to be faster and it's going to be better for the motor, right? The longevity and everything. Same goes with our bodies, like health-wise, if, if you're feeding your body a bunch of just junk food that has very little nutritional value, how's your body going to respond? Your, your body's not going to like it. Your body's more likely going to not feel as good. It's not going to look as good. And it's just not going to function like it should. Why? Because our our bodies are, are, are a living organism. It's not just some, you know, random, stale, stagnant thing. It's, it's a living, growing, moving piece of, of who we are. So it needs a fuel source. And that fuel source is nutrients. So if you're feeding it the nutrients that it needs, then you're going to feel better. You're, you're going to function better. You're going to look better. Because your body's getting the proper nutrients. Now, this is not a you know health and fitness podcast, okay? But there's a lot of great correlations between feeding our bodies physical food and not just food, junk food, but good food. What about our brain? What about our mind? What about our spirit? If you're feeding it junk, you're probably getting junk or you're probably not functioning like you should. You know that old saying, you are what you eat? You know, there's, there's a lot of truth to that. You know, we just talked about if you're feeding it a bunch of junk, not that you turn into junk food, you know, but you probably are not feeling great. I know for me, when I started eating healthier, when I don't eat healthy, I definitely feel a difference. I don't feel as good. I'm sure that food may have tasted great, you know, in the moment, but later I just feel like junk, man. Like I don't feel as good. My stomach gets upset. I, I don't have the energy levels versus when I'm giving it good nutrition. So again, if your brain, if you are becoming what you're constantly feeding it, that's kind of a scary thought. And I think today's application is so important because if you're listening to this at current time, we're still in quarantine. We're still having to practice social distance, which means what? For most of you out there, you are on the internet more, you're on social media more, you're on Netflix more, you know, you're, you're probably listening to music more. You're, you're doing more to feed your brain and your mind and your soul probably more than you would on a typical day if we're not in quarantine. Why? Because you're going to be at school more, you're going to be in sports more, so you're going to be, yes, you're still filling your mind with stuff, but, but it's less vacant time that you get to really choose what to feed it, right? Like your schedules are, you know, sports or school or work, whereas now you have a lot more free time. So I guarantee you, you're doing all those things that I said a lot more than normal, which can be okay. Look, internet is not bad in and of itself. Social media is not bad in and of itself. Netflix, any of those things that I named, they're not bad. Can they be bad? Absolutely. There's bad things on all those channels that I just mentioned. So what are you feeding your brain right now? What food are you giving it? Because here's what's happening, guys. It is influencing you. I promise you, it is influencing you. How do I know this? Well, I know this from experience, for one. Like, I can think back to not only when I was, like, in middle school or high school, and maybe the stuff that I was filling my brain with, you know, the the music that I was listening to, the people that I was hanging around with, which... I'm going to hop off topic for just a split second. It's not really off topic, but it's a whole nother 
you know, rabbit to chase at some point. The saying that you are an average of the five people that you hang out with, man, that is so true. Oh my goodness, it's so true. The more that I live, the more that I, I work with teenagers and, and just even in people in general in life, the more that I see that and it's so evident. So I'm definitely going to talk about that more on another episode. That's going to be a podcast in and of itself. But again, the truth of that is the same because you're, you're feeding yourself what those individuals are, right? Like the five people that you're hanging out with the most, you know, what are their thought process? What is their, their uh, outlook on life? What, is the, what are their worldviews? What are they spending their time doing? All that stuff is influencing who you are and the way you think and the way you act and the way you're responding to life. So again, go back to, you know, more of the outside sources is what we're talking about today, like, you know, music, TV, Netflix, and so on. All right, so I can go back and think about the times when I was feeding my brain and my mind certain things. I spoke differently and I acted differently. I know it's influencing you. And it may not be like an instant, you know, oh, flip the switch and now all of a sudden I'm talking weird or talking differently or acting differently. But I promise you guys, it is slowly changing who you are and how you're, you're either thinking or acting. Look, I even went and did a little uh, experiment a few years ago. So I had a good bit of teenagers in my youth group that were listening to some modern day hip hop and rap. And I mean, that's still probably very, you know, <laughs> the same thing even today. But, but this was a few years ago and I knew they were listening to this stuff. And honestly, I haven't really listened to, to the current hip hop and rap in a while. And I used to listen to it when I was younger in high school, college and all that. But I really haven't listened to much of that since then. So I thought, you know what? I need to listen. What, what is it like? I obviously, I knew it wasn't good. This is not Christian rap they were listening to. So I wanted to hear the messages that were being pushed to them, essentially, through music. So I, I uh, kind of dedicated myself to when I would go work out every day that I was going to listen to the modern hip-hop, the modern rap, to see what is it that they're getting, what is it that they're hearing, and honestly, I didn't like it, but I forced myself to listen to it. And of course, I didn't want to listen to it at home with my kids or family. Uh, so I was just listening to it in the gym by myself. And look, guys, I, I'm an adult. I am solid in who I am, in the beliefs that I have as a, belie- you know, as a believer, as a Christian, as a youth pastor, as a you know, father, a husband, all that. Now, I mean, I'm not like solid in I don't mess up. I do, but... Solid in the sense that I'm not searching to find who I am, like a lot of young people are. A lot of you listening to this, you're probably still trying to figure out exactly who I am and and how should I be and how should I act and all that kind of stuff. So look, after about two weeks, I noticed myself, I had changed a little. The way I talked and even the way I thought was being influenced by the stuff that I was listening to. I'd catch myself maybe saying some stuff that, you know, was not really right or, or thinking things that weren't really normal. And I'm like, wait a minute, this stuff is influencing me. So I know if it's, if it's slightly influencing me, that it's influencing you as a young person. Be careful what you're filling your mind with. Man, are you filling it with a bunch of junk? Because that's what's going to happen. That's what you're going to become slowly over time. Instead, Paul is telling us to do what? Let's go back to that passage again. Fill your minds, dwell on these things that are true, that are noble, that are pure, that are lovely, that are honorable. Those are the things that Paul's saying. Not all that crap, not all that junk that's out there. Look, teenagers, you got to be careful. And even adults, if you're listening to this, it's not just teenagers. We as adults can still fill our mind with a bunch of crap, whether it be just, you know, bad theology, whether it be, you know, political garbage, whether it be uh, just, you you know, whatever, whatever it is. There's just so much junk out there that we can fill our minds with and even our eyes with, right? The things that we're seeing on social media or even on the Internet. 
you know, porn is obviously a huge, huge issue, right, in, in society. And I've even heard that during this quarantine time, the numbers of, of porn have skyrocketed because people have more free time and so they're on the internet more. Guys, if you're filling your brain with that stuff, if you're filling your eyes with that stuff, guess what? It's influencing you. It is harming you. It's going to influence how you think. You're going to be thinking about that stuff more often, and you're probably going to be wanting to act on that stuff more often. Instead, Paul's saying, don't fill your mind with that garbage. It's garbage. It's like the junk food. It doesn't have nutritional value. It's not helping you. Instead, Focus on things that are true and noble and right and pure and lovely and honorable. You know, things that are authentic and compelling and gracious. And in the the message version, it says the, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, the things to praise, not the things to curse. Right? That's the stuff that we need to be focused on. That's what we need to be filling our brain with. Because that is more beneficial And then he goes on to say, if you'll do that, if you'll put that into practice, you know, meaning that that you're actually going out and doing that, right? Like you've learned it. Okay, this is what I should do. And then you actually go do it. That the God of peace will be with you. You know how many people want peace right now? Peace in this world, peace in their lives, peace in relationships, whatever. Everybody, right? Well, God's telling you, if you want peace, this is a great way to get peace. And we're living in a very chaotic moment right now with, with uh, the COVID-19 still, you know, I think we're on the downhill, but it's still, it's still happening. And it's, things are very chaotic. You want some peace? Well, God's saying, well, here you go. Here's some peace. Put this into practice. Quit dwelling on the crap. Quit dwelling on the negative stuff. Quit dwelling on evil stuff. Fill your minds with good. Fill your minds with truth. Things that are honorable, noble, excellent. You know, that's the kind of stuff that will help you. That's the kind of stuff that will benefit you. You know, I'm telling you guys, it will make a difference in your life if you will do this. I promise you, I promise you you're going to see a difference. I just know from my own life when I've gotten off track and I've filled my mind with crap, I become a different person. I become a person that I don't, I know I don't need to be that kind of person, right? Like I need to be the person God has created me to be. And he's given me the, he's given me the, the key to success. It's right here. Quit filling your mind with crap. Fill it with good stuff. So maybe some of you need to get off, you know, your screens so much your your phones and your computers spend some more time in the word man spend some more time praying or or surrounding yourself with with positivity and good truth and messages this podcast again i'm not asking for hours and hours and hours i'm putting out one podcast a week 30 minutes usually put this 30 minutes to good use Fill your brain, fill your mind, fill your spirit with some good biblical truth. Guys, and I hope you're doing your daily devotions and your prayer time and and getting some good Bible intake that way because that is so important. I'm telling you, it's going to make a big difference. You know, Paul was trying to teach these these, uh, young believers in Philippi how to live a more fulfilling life. You know, and this was one of the keys. So I'm sharing this with you guys as well. Man, I know it makes a big difference in my life, and I don't have it perfected. Look, hey, I'm far from it. I'm far from it, but I'm working on it, and I have to remind myself, look, this podcast is for me just as much as it is for anybody else that's going to listen or watch this. I need to do this more. I need to fill my mind and my brain and my spirit with more of this. Guys, I hope you benefited from it. Look, I beg you, if you're finding value from these, please share them with somebody. That's how the podcast grows. It grows when people get value and they share it with others and tell others. 
So please do that. I would appreciate that. Also, if you've not left a review, uh, as of right now, I think iTunes is the only way you can leave a review for the podcast. I don't think Spotify can will, will let you do that yet. So, so get on iTunes. It literally takes maybe a minute, maybe two minutes to, to give it a little quick rating. Um, and even like a little review, like a little written review would really mean a lot because that will help this podcast to grow, to reach others, and it'll be easier for other teenagers out there. Uh, to find this because I do want this to be more than just you know teenagers in in my youth group I want it to be teenagers all over the world that are finding this and finding value because I know I know this stuff is beneficial I know this stuff will help guys I love you again if there's anything I can do for you let me know have a good one Bye-bye. I don't wanna be just someone that's new. I speak my mind so free, so you could hear the truth. Yeah, I know that we.